In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is an important Sunday. It's called the last Sunday after Pentecost, after Pentecost Day. It's the Sunday when we sort of wrap things up, because next Sunday we begin it all again on Advent 1 and go through the story of Jesus and the story of the Holy Spirit coming and the story of the church and all of the learnings and parables. But this is the final Sunday of that church year. So it's an important Sunday. And what the church has chosen to give us for scripture in the lectionary um, was carefully selected. It might seem a little out of place because what we're hearing about Jesus is really, of course, when he was being interrogated before he was crucified. But that's what has been chosen for this day, for the wrap-up Sunday. Jesus answered, you say that I am king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. An interesting exchange there, and it all revolves around that one word, king. King. Strange word for us. When I say king in regard to us in this church right now, hmm, what comes to mind? In my mind, uh, the thought was, not in the United States of America, we don't do kings. It's not a part of our heritage. In fact, we chose to, be, to separate ourselves from a king. Um, also, it comes to mind, a king, that's a man, right? That's a man. Also, maybe king might have something to do with royalty, of course, in other locations, but it's more of a kind of power that is titular or a power that is symbolic of leadership in a nation. It really doesn't represent much more than that. But go back 500 years ago. 500 years ago, King had a different, uh, different understanding, right? European countries had kings. And those kings were, in fact, the power, the seat of power for that nation, and made decisions about wars and activities in the nation and exploring the new frontier, the new world, and seizing property all around the globe. Um, it was very significant what that king did 500 years ago. Uh, because he really had power. But go back 2,000 years ago, and the king was even, it was even different. The king, actually, under the Roman Empire, did not have that much power. The king was a representative of the, of the Roman emperor. So a king in the area of Israel was named, I mean, Herod was named, but um, he was really a puppet of the Roman emperor. Still, however, that person, that man, had a responsibility to do what the emperor wanted, which was to quell, to extinguish any kind of resistance to the power of the empire. So it's an interesting word. Why was that chosen on this, the last Sunday of the year? You say that I am a king. We just heard a little bell. I think that is a, really, is a really important message coming here, folks. <laughs> Check out your cell phone. It's a really important message. You say that I am king, and of course, in that context, 2,000 years ago, it, was, it meant that if there's some king other than the king that we have, other than the representative of the Roman Empire, it's trouble. Because we know that that king's going to cause an uprising, going to go against the government and that king has to be stopped. And so that's the context in which that word was used. But listen to the words in the gospel according to John. Jesus answered, you say that I am king. It really 
It feels like a but there. But for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. And this is the best sentence. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. That's the definition sentence in this whole passage of the king. It's a, it's a weird understanding of king, right? And yet it does address that issue of power, of leadership. But it's of spiritual leadership, not political or military leadership. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear that sentence, when I read that sentence, when I look at that sentence, when I say, when I hear it read, it sort of relaxes me. Okay, so this person, Jesus, this expression of God, Jesus Christ, is not here about making sure that you folks win for God, or that we do it right, or that we're on top of the hill. Instead of all of that conflict and proving who's right or who's wrong, instead of all of that, the message is everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. So basically, Jesus is saying, if you listen to me, you will learn the truth. It's so much different, so different than a kingly warrior. If you listen to me, you'll learn the truth. You'll learn the truth about God. You'll learn the truth about the different expressions of God. You'll learn the truth about the spiritual life that comes after we die physically. You'll learn the truth about who you are. If you listen, if we listen to the voice of Jesus, we will learn more about who we are. More and more of our leaders in the realm of spirituality now and hundreds of years before talk about the fact that as faithful followers of Jesus, our leader, our king, we all need to learn how to die before we die, meaning we all need to learn how to release those things which control us, maybe those power things which control us, so that we can truly discover and learn the real us, the real us which lives in the heart of God as we allow God to live in our heart. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Everyone who belongs to the truth, the truth of humanity and life, listens to my voice. And the reverse is true. Everyone who listens to the voice of Jesus in your own way will discover that truth. That's refreshing. That's good news. That's exciting. That's liberating. And that is the message of the one we call Christ the King. It's a funny kind of king. But it is a leader whom we choose to follow because we know he is the truth. Amen.